Um, so now we're going to talk about how the number of pulses per image affects our frame rate. A lower number of pulses used to create each image will produce higher frame rates. A higher number of pulses used to create each image will produce lower frame rates. So if I use five pulses um, to make an image um, and each one takes a second to go there and back, my go return time, that's going to be five seconds that it takes me to create an image, correct? Well, let's say I use 10 pulses and each one takes a second to go there and back. I now take 10 seconds to make each image. You see the, the simple math. I know the numbers are big, but you're, I'm doing so so that you can understand the principle or the concept. So therefore, pulses per frame and frame rate are inversely related, not or, are inversely related. There's three factors that determine the number of pulses needed to create each image. They are, number one, the number of pulses per scan line. Remember, we have multi versus single focus. Number two is the sector size. Number three is the line density. Um, and these are the lines per angle of sector. So, so remember, let's, you know, all of these things that we're doing, all we're doing is each one of those adds pulses to my image. Therefore, increasing the time that it takes to make each image. Therefore, decreasing the time or decreasing my frame rate or the number of cycles that I make per second. Therefore, decreasing my temporal resolution. I constantly am beating the dead horse that this always go back. This always goes back to how long it takes to make one frame and then the domino effect happens so let's talk about um, the number of pulses per scan line um, remember with um, a single focus we have one pulse per scan line okay an individual sound beam has only one focus with single focus imaging, only one sound pulse is transmitted down each scan line. And here's an example and look in the book. If this is my transducer, I have one pulse for every scan line, okay? As the sonographer activates multiple focal zones, uh, the number of pulses transmitted down each scan line increases. And let me draw my little picture here. So we already understand how we how multifocus works. If I want to increase, um, if I have one focus on, but I want to increase it to three, I now have to send three pulses down each scan line. So as the sonographer activates multiple multiple focal zones, the number of pulses transmitted down each scan line increases. So I now made this image have three focuses. So you see pulse, 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 so on and so forth. So instead of before when I had seven, I now have 21 pulses that I need to use to create that image. So the number of pulses needed uh, to make an image increases. What is that going to do? It's going to increase the time it takes to make one frame, which means that it's going, I'm going to be able to create less cycles per second, which means that my temporal resolution is going to suffer. So, an example, an ultrasound system creates an image with 100 pulses into the body using a single focus. Focus. Therefore, 100 distinct sound pulses create the image. Now, the sonographer gets greedy and adjusts the system to operate with four foci or four focuses. What happens? How many pulses are used to create each image? Each pulse, pulse now has its own focus, therefore four foci times 100 pulses equals 400 pulses. This will increase the time it takes to make each image. That means frame rate and temporal resolution diminish or degrade. Because you understand what how each image is created and what is used and how that directly affects the time it takes to make one image, you go, you're going to be able to answer 
the frame rate and the temporal resolution questions. It's a, it's a domino effect. You only have to know, you understand the concept, but it all goes back to the validation of how long does it take me to make one frame. So what's the main advantage of multiple focal zones? Um, we get superior lateral resolution. We know that because we're narrowing the beam at all depths, correct? Uh, there's a, however, there is a trade-off between temporal and lateral resolution. If I put four, five, six focuses on that image, I'm going to have superior lateral resolution, a beautiful picture, but it's going to slow down that moving picture. Both can't exist. The only way they can is I have to take away from that lateral to give to that temporal, and we have to meet in the middle somewhere. That is the life of an ultrasound tech. <clears throat> until they find a way that both can coexist superiorly you just have to find that trade-off uh, sector size again it's also called the field of view what are we doing we're increasing the sector size we're adding pulses to uh, our picture Did I not increase my sector size here? All I did was, if I, if I used five pulses there, now I have to use many more pulses to get there. As the sector size increases, the number of pulses required to make an image increases. Uh, figure 13.5 shows this. So for example, as an, uh, an ultrasound system creates a 30 degree sector image with one transmit line for each degree of sector. And, and now remember, you understand so that I'll show you. Okay, bear with me, I'm gonna draw this picture. Okay, this is a wedge shape, okay? I'll drop it down a little bit. Does this not make an angle? Of course it does. So if this is a 30 degree angle, and I say I have one line for every degree of sector, how many lines do I have? 30. So I have a 30 degree sector image with one transmit line for each degree of that sector. That's a fancy schmancy wordy way of saying 30 lines or 30 distinct sound pulses. And yes, I said fancy schmancy. Uh, now, the, uh, imagine the sonographer makes only one change by adjusting uh, the system to create a 90 degree sector image. He makes one change. Did he change the transmit lines down each sector? Uh, one transmit line for each degree of sector? No. The only thing he changed was he went from 30 to 90. So what did he do? How many pulses are needed? Simple. 90 distinct pulses. So what is that going to do to my the time it takes to make one frame or my T-frame? it's going to increase it because instead of 30 I now need 90 so it's going to decrease the cycles per second I'm sorry the frames per second or the frame rate which thereby degrades my temporal resolution same thing over and over and over so more time is now needed to make the image the frame rate decreases temporal resolution is reduced line density uh, line density is the ability of the system to alter the space between sound beams. Adding pulses. If they're spaced farther apart, it's a low line density. If they're close together, it's a high line density. Okay, and I'm going to draw a little picture here to show for the next example. So bear with me for one second. All right, so space far apart, low line density, close together high line density. Um, it's, it's important that you understand that. Look at figure 13.7 and just kind of make sure you have that image in your head so that you understand the terminology. High line density means pulses per image increase and the temporal resolution decreases. Okay, High line density, there's a, there's a, a lot more lines if you want to put it that way. So it's going to decrease the time it takes. It's going to increase, I'm sorry, increase the time it takes to make one image which decreases my frame rate, which decreases the temporal resolution. Uh, low line density or, or, or fewer lines means uh, pulses per image decreases. So less pulses means 
uh, the, the faster I can make uh, one image which means my my frame rate increases and my temporal resolution increases so for example assume that a system creates a 90 degree sector image um, <clears throat> with a line every two degrees so how many how many lines do I need to make that image simple if I have 90 degrees and every two degrees I drop a line 45 distinct sound pulses half of 90 so now the sonographer increases the line density to one line every degree the number of pulses per image is per image increases to 90 all I did was is if, if this is every two degree I now go every one degree does everybody get that that's all I did filled in the gaps I've added more lines added more pulses more time is needed to make the image therefore frame rate decreases and temporal resolution degrades it's the same thing over and over now remember I can ask you what if I said you know if I went back to this and I asked you uh, assume the system creates a 90 degree sector image with a line every one degree and then I decided to take away pulses and and make a line every two degrees I'm just reversing the process you understand the concept both ways it's not a trick okay it's very simple so what is the main advantage of highline density okay of course we know highline density has a negative effect on temporal resolution right this this could even read what is the main advantage of having many more pulses in an image um, it's the same thing highline density has a negative effect on temporal resolution it slows it down however all of those pulses tightly packed together improves the accuracy of the individual images it's like going from a 2 megapixel camera to a 20 megapixel camera if that even exists the 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 accuracy the image quality it's like super duper duper detailed right so with highline density each image contains more detail or spatial resolution detail overall image quality detail spatial resolution when you see detail spatial resolution detail spatial resolution overall detail of the image spatial resolution this is known as improved spatial resolution because highline density means improved spatial resolution or overall detail of the image again there's another trade-off so I must balance between temporal and spatial resolution remember they can't coexist okay now the, the end of the chapter the little note says if I put uh, a multi-focusing improves lateral resolution um, yes that is absolutely positively 100 percent correct why because we know that that's what focusing does um, spatial resolution improves with highline density but is it not safe to also say that um, spatial resolution should improve as well because focusing improves you know detail of course it does absolutely so you know if I ask specifically you know which resolution uh, is affected or is best is best uh, fixed or, or whatever the word is I'm trying to think of with multifocusing well, of course it's lateral am I gonna put lateral and spatial no now the registry might and we talked about that but what's the best answer lateral but if I just say overall adding pulses to the image or highline density or whatever it is if I increase the number of pulses used to make that image I'm improving the overall detail right I'm improving spatial resolution and I'm decreasing or degrading temporal resolution so um, the end of the chapter table 13 5 no one understand um, you understand the concept you know what happens to your frame rate and you validate it with all right it all goes back to the foundation the concrete slab how long does it take to make one image so you guys got it I'm I'm very proud of you for sticking through this thinking material just study know your know your rules and you're gonna be fine 
So uh, I will see you guys on Monday.